Okay, so today I've got a bad tail light. It got full of water. Somehow the uh, the sealed area of the LEDs got full of water from taking the boat in and out, and uh, it stopped working. So I picked up a couple of new ones, which I'll show you the part numbers in a little bit. Uh, on Amazon, they weren't, oh, no, actually I got them from e-trailer because uh, I wanted a specific type. And they weren't terribly bad. They were, you know, fairly inexpensive for what they are going to be. And so today's video is going to be how to change out trailer lights in general and specifically how to try to make the best waterproof connection possible for a boat trailer or something like this. And if, I mean, even for a regular trailer, if it's going to be, if the wiring is going to be exposed to road stuff. So that's what we're going to do today. All right, so these lights, these are my replacements. And as you can see, it's just one single potted unit. There's no screws, no nothing that comes off, no pieces that come out. It's just one single unit. And two different part numbers. They are Westbar, W-E-S-B-A-R. And there's your uh, curbside, the 271-574. And here's the other one, which is the roadside, which has the 271-575 part number. And the difference is the roadside has your light for the... Uh, license plate and the special about these this trailer is over eight feet wide so it needs the outer signals have to be lit uh, as well as a couple of other things but that's the difference you got to make sure that if you have a wide trailer that you get the lights that shine out over here as well to mark the width of the trailer that's something that's required as far as I can tell so now we're going to start taking the uh, oh I also picked up some heat shrink crimp fittings and a little bit of electrical spray, liquid electrical tape. These are Home Depot specials for a few bucks. But, uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to use these for the butt connections because I, they, obviously we don't have wires that are long enough to run them all the way up to the front of the boat and just have no splices, which I would like to do, but doesn't not really an option here. And so that's what we're going to do. Okay, so as far as replacement of this unit goes, this I don't believe it's necessary to pull this panel off, but... I'm going to do it just to show you what I've got. Just four screws. Because depending on how your lights are set up, you may need to open it up to be able to remove the housing. And, yeah, it doesn't. But, I mean, see, this, is, this comes apart pretty easy. Not much there. So, on the back side, we've got a couple of half-inch, maybe? Nope, seven sixteenths. You think after all these years I'd know that? A couple of seven sixteenths studs. Pop them loose, and it slides up and over because they're just ca carriage bolts. So that's how it comes apart. And you can see what we have here is just some little potted LEDs, nothing terribly special, nothing that keeps water from going in or out of this box. And this thing here had gotten full of water. So I just popped a couple of holes in it to drain the water to see if it did anything and it didn't. So it didn't make it any better. So that's the extent of how that comes off. Now on the back side, they've got the ground, a couple of grounds hooked up. Make sure those are still kept good. I'll show you the back of this in a minute. Whew, not too fond of that. This hole, pretty sharp when well, that goes through. See, there's a burr on it in there, and there's really no protection for these wires. So before I finish this up, I'm gonna take some hose, if I can find it, and wrap it around that, and get it so where it so where that's protected as it goes through this thing, because that really should have a grommet on it. That's not great, but. So there it is. So what we'll end up having to do is 
There's another wire in there. Let's see if I can fish that out. Okay, so I fished them out a little bit, and here are the buck connections that they used, which seem to be little shrink connections, so that's kind of what they did. And then they don't look bad. Um, but my guess being that this one here has two wires hooked to it is brown would be my stop lights because that's going to be the same on both sides and the yellow would be the turn signal and then white obviously is the ground so that's what we're going to end up doing i wish i had a little more wire to play with because i don't really want to uh, leave these splices in there and that's getting kind of short but i'm going to do my best to try to not have to carve any more holes inside this frame to dig all this stuff out because they ran the wires all the way up through it inside the frame and being aluminum i just don't want to cut any more holes in it but uh, i'm going to start pulling on that a little bit see if i can find a little more wire to get out of there yeah that's pretty much the extent of it so before i do anything since this is dead i'm just going to cut this off and strip these ends a little bit and i'm just going to tie the new wire the new light in and test it just to make sure that the connections are going to be correct. All right, so that is how it's supposed to be hooked up. Got our side marker, got our license plate light, got our parking lights, and we got our brake lights. And boy, is that bright. So that looks really good right now. So now we're going to pause this for a minute while I figure out how we're going to get the rest of this set up. I'm going to try see if I can pop this uncomp un uncrimp this and pop it loose from the wire it's not playing very nice so cut that off I'm stab myself in the thumb there it is that connection with the uh, shrink tubing is pretty impressive. That's not bad. Here it goes. Okay. And actually, that shrink tubing worked pretty good. There's no obvious corrosion in there at this point, so that's kind of nice. And we're going to end up cutting that off. Okay. Now we will strip a little bit of it. Grab one of these heat shrink buck connectors. that on there strip a little off of this one crimp it good all right now we're gonna go get the heat gun so this is kind of an old school monocote heat gun for model airplanes but it's the only one I have it gets pretty hot and so yeah. see if we can shrink this stuff all right that worked pretty good not bad for this next one, because it already has two connectors in it, I think I'm going to keep that shrink connector, and I'm going to shrink it a little more when I'm done. Um, but it's going to be hard to be able to do all of that because this, these wires are so short. I don't have any more ability to put anything else in there. 
So I'm going to keep that connector as much as I don't really like adding another connector. Cut this a little bit down and butt splice the black wire onto it. So one thing I don't like about the way they did it is these shrink connectors work properly when there's a single wire. With two wires in that one, you've got a gap in between those two that it's not going to seal most likely. So there's a good, there is a possibility that you're going to get some water in there. So that's where um, the next thing comes in, which is the first time I've ever used this stuff. I'd hope to find it in a brush. But the, I gotta get a paper, I got a piece of paper. The, liquid electrical tape, which I don't quite understand. But it's supposed to help waterproof your connections. It smells good. <laughs> let that sit for a little bit and now I'm gonna go test it all right now she doesn't work till we ground it hopefully and there we go everything's back so perfect now what I need to do is figure out how to make that hole so it's not gonna cut into my wires and see if it's gonna mount to the same mounts and I may have to re-drill new holes so not too bad so far. Okay, so it will fit on these bolts, on these original ones, on the outer two slots and hold it right nice and tight. But there's not a lot of room in here, so what I did to try to protect these wires is I wrapped them with some regular old electrical tape, so once they go through there, the electrical tape will be in that kind of spot that I can't clean and get rid of that burr. I'm also gonna take this and run it this way. Little slots in there to hold on to the wires so they're a little neater. I'm gonna see if we can get this done. Yep, these are gonna be just a hair too wide. I'm probably gonna have to slot those bolt holes because the weld on the frame makes it a little uh, so it's not gonna line up flush. So I need to move those out. What I may do, if I can ever get it out, no. There's another set of holes. And I can move it out to here, which is probably better because that's actually the full width of the trailer. And then I'll just add a little bit more electrical tape. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna do that right now. Now I'm gonna try this again with the new slots. Okay, now we'll hook the grounds back up. And all the grounds are, it's hooked to the frame back here. Uh-oh. <laughs> Shoot. I gotta go get a connector a little bit bigger eye. And there it is. Put this one on. And that one back on. Flip this one the right way. And it seats. There it goes. And of course, it's not level. <laughs> there we go. All right. And 
and there it is. So, now we're going to give it a test. Alright, got my little white light underneath for the license plate, turn signal, park, and marker. See that side marker light over there. Okay, so that is how you swap a trailer light. And hopefully those little connections that I made will stay good. Now, just going to do the same on the other side. Make my nice match set. And we will be good to go. There's only the one ground that they ran to the back of this pin into the trailer. Um, but they gave me plenty of extra wire to handle that without having to keep these. Also kind of sharp inside so I'm definitely going to tape it up when I get the other one installed just like that other side. The rest of it is the same. We're going to test it first, hook it up, shrink it, spray it, wrap it, and bolt it on. All right so since I knew what I was doing on the second one that one went a little quicker Everything's good. All taped up. And all the lights work. So, hopefully, these will last a little longer than eight months. But, uh, so there you go. Changing your lights and trying to make waterproof connections on a boat trailer.